it's time we had a bit of a chat. Well, I'm here in Ulaanbaatar and it's about minus 18 degrees Celsius at the moment. That's about minus one Fahrenheit. And I'm walking up towards Gandan Monastery, which is a quite a peaceful area within walking distance from our home. Just pan you round. So in this week's episode, we're going to welcome Jerry. He came to help us on board Lucky Fish on several occasions while we were on the hard stand in Florida. Jerry brings with him a wealth of experience from the fishing world. But before we get started with Jerry, wind generators. What a response we had to our install guide on the uh, Rutland 1200, the mast top installation. If you haven't uh, checked out the comments on that video for a while, it's had something like 21,000 views and over 200 comments from all you fabulous viewers. Thank you so much for that. Reading through them and seeing the depth of knowledge out there really made me think of YouTube University. We had responses from submarine engineers. I mean, if you want to talk about quietening down items of equipment, who better than a submarine acoustics technician? We had comments from, I think, uh, I don't know what you would call someone who builds um, jet fighters for the US Air Force, but he was talking about machine gun mounts and with uh, rubber mountings and sent us links to where we can buy those sorts of things. So there's a wealth of ideas there that we can go on with to try and quieten down our wind generator installation. And I'm looking forward to putting some of those ideas into practice and coming back to you with the results, of course. Um, <clears throat> there's too many of you to thank for all your advice there, but I can say that for those of you that suggested um, something along the lines of uh, centre mounted rubber bushings and also balancing the uh, rotor and a proper uh, propeller balancing apparatus and also for those who suggested uh, encapsulating or wrapping the uh, mounting pole with um, rubber or rope someone suggested French whipping and generating some sort of a spiral to dampen the harmonics that looked like a really interesting idea so we're going to try and put all three of those suggestions to use when we get back to the boat and as I say we'll come back to you with the results thank you all so much so on that note of YouTube University I have another favor to ask of you we made a promise a while ago to patrons uh, that we would generate some t-shirts and give them away now I've had a great deal of trouble trying to source what I'd call ethical t-shirts, ones that don't involve child labour, uh, cotton industry, I think the fashion industry is one of the most underrated, um, scourges on the environment, uses so much water, uh, we've got our old favourites Monsanto in there with herbicides and pesticides, and I hope we've dispelled that myth that Monsanto are one of the sponsors of our channel, they certainly are not. Um, so, you know, we're looking for something, I guess we'd call them ethical t-shirts. Uh, perhaps we're looking at a hemp blend, um, a hemp organic cotton blend or bamboo, something along those lines. And I've had the devil's own job trying to find a supplier who will print and dispatch these out to our patrons. I've been very reluctant to get into merchandise. Our channel's not really about um, encouraging consumption. If anything, we'd like to discourage it. Uh, but if we can do it in an ethical way and attach a good message to it, then I can see a positive out of that. Uh, this hat's actually hemp. Good old Sea Shepherd Foundation. My, uh, my son did some volunteer work he spent last year volunteering for them, and I'm so proud of you, Fletcher, for doing that. But, you know, it is possible to get, I guess, um, branded merchandise in um, sustainable or ethical materials. Um, if Sea Shepherd can do it, we'd like to do it, and perhaps someone out there, one of you viewers, can help us with that. We would really appreciate your comments. Thank you very much. So that brings me to the topic of today's video. Captain Jerry joined us on several occasions, as I mentioned earlier, and brought many ideas with him. He's uh, spent something like 30 years as a professional sports fisherman and guide in Florida. And it was an absolute pleasure to meet him first at the Hui and then have him come on board and bring a few changes to our lifestyle on Lucky Fish, things that he felt would improve things. After 30 years of sports fishing, Jerry became somewhat of a fish himself. He described himself as having 
the ability to think like a fish and in so doing he found he no longer wanted to catch them so he gave that career up and uh, discovered sailing and now he sails an aluminium canoe and trials oh, modern and um, traditional sail rigs on it and posts the results on Facebook. Jerry's a great character and he's become a real friend of Lucky Fish, Zaya and I and I uh, hope he becomes your friend too and you enjoy today's video. Hello, my name is Jerry. I'm Zaya. And we're trying to show you some basic flies that we could tie, finding materials around the boat that you could use for trolling off your sailboat. First of all, she's gonna use the fancy tying stuff. You don't need all this fancy material. You could actually do it with some simple materials like these. Right, actually, I'm gonna make a uh, fly tying vise just with these two tools right here. And there you go, you have a fly tying vise. So basically I'm getting hooks with long shank hooks to make a uh, type of a fly that is called a bend back fly, but we're just gonna supersize it. Jerry explained to us the advantage of the bend back fly before showing us how to make them. This one, this is called a, it's called a bend back fly. There's an old guy called Carl Hansen who used to make them what you do is you bend it a little bit. You get want to get a hook with a long shank. And then you bend it a little and then what you do is you put your materials on top and this 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 Lens lure will right. actually swim like this in the water, you see? Mm -hmm. So it's kinda of weedless and all that so stuff flies in, it won't you know, mm -hmm. you get through the sargasso, you know, it won't get hooked. But then with a the fish comes in and nails it, he's gonna get hooked. Yeah. So so you could slide this thing through a whole bunch of you know weeds because that's what happens you got this big trolling thing and you're trolling through the sargasso and you catch all the sargasso but you don't catch any fish and the fish are going to be where right there or where the sargasso weeds are you know so i got you so with this hook i actually get a a vice grip and go about there and then you give it a nice little bend Like crap, crap, you know, so. The lures we were making should resemble bait fish like flying fish, ballyhoo, or squid. First, you start with a base and then you get your materials and put it on there. And uh, start first. When you trim it in an angle, it gives it a nice tapered head. Get a little thing. So it's almost like what you do when you soak. Mm -hmm. And you put it in the eye like this. Pull it a bit, then twist it, and bring it. Mm -hmm. Put it into the loop. Yeah. This thing. How many times? I no, did you just three do it times. once. Wait, right, you can just do it once. I did three. Oh, you did three? Okay, that's good. We're basically trimming this, and you want to trim it like in an angle without cutting all your hair. Like like this angle, like this. Alright, and then we're gonna, we're gonna do is we're gonna finish the head, but we just keep on tying at it to try to, to make it like, like all covered up. You could actually really see it on this, this one, because you can see how I'm slowly, slowly the white is disappearing. Put some of this stuff here. This is what it'll do. It'll protect the the line from raveling and falling apart. This is actually fingernail uh, polish. Oh, boy, was a fingernail polish? Varnish. Varnish. You probably have to do it one time, let it dry, and then do it again. Just to. That's what it does is that'll protect the line. Show us your first lure. my hook. No, I can't see the hook. And if you really want to get it elaborate, sharpie pins. Good 
interesting colors on. You can actually do any color pattern you want. So it actually rides with a hookup like this. But we're just supersizing a fly. Do you think fish get full with this? Sure. They will. Now though, if you want to give it shape, and that's what you do, you flatten it out like, you know, flatten it out like this. You could taper it a little and give it, you actually could give it shape, you see. Oh, you, you got it nice and fluffy. Well, that'll get somebody's attention. Little fish, right. they're going to pick at the tail, and then something big. Comes in, it's going to take whole the whole lot. Show, you know? Then you hook him. There you go. And that way, you're actually selective. Selective. If I should show you the the one. There's another one that you can make like a needle nose, and you make like a braid, and you actually braid it. What you do is you get the string, and you actually tie it at the end. And then once once it's tied at the end, you braid it like you know when you braid a, a hair yeah. a girl's hair. Uh huh. Okay, let me braid it. All the way. Yeah, because basically we're copying a needlefish. Now this is this line is kind of small, but imagine if you do something like this with a you know with a with a thicker string or a rope, it starts becoming like a tail. So what are you going to do with the front? Well basically what you do is you tie it on, you tie this first oh, the onto the hook, hook on, tie it first onto the hook. So you do your bend back, tile. you do the bend back and you tie it onto the hook and then, then you actually free this thing it and there. Yeah. We'll, we'll go like that, you know. Now I've seen people lay it come in and they, they, if you have a thicker rope, you could actually, you know, and then you actually put a couple more hooks on there and all that. But these things. I'm gonna just put a swivel on here, and this is important on this type of this type of lures. Uh, you want a good swivel that'll be re resistant to salt water. So you're twisting the line, and then at the end you go 90, and then you. You twist it at 90. So this is the uh, this is full actually, size balahoo, yeah? Yeah, this is the full size balahoo with the rope that I did. Can so. to tie it? Yeah. So. You'll brush that last one out after you've tied it, will you? Brush it? Yeah, you're going to... Yeah, put, I brush yeah. the end out. Yeah. Yeah, we make it frizzy, you know. <laughs> the target species would be fish like tuna, dorado, cerro jacks, and barracuda. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> this works as a weed guard. So if you're swimming around a whole bunch of sargasso and stuff like that, you know. It'll, uh, the sargasso should just go right uh, right around this. You don't just crank like this. Actually bring it up, go about that, and then reel down. Bring it up. And if the fish keeps on going, you just let it go. And then the only thing is if the fish jumps, when the fish is jumping, you want to actually bow with the fish. Because some fishes won't jump, but like the dorados, when they fish, when you see them and all of a sudden they jump, you want to let it, you know, mm -hmm. bow down with it because it'll... Now let's see how much weight we can put on there. How much pressure do we say on that scale now? Two, two kilo, four pounds. The jury's doing a strain test on our gear, testing the knots and the wire join and the strength of the rod and the strength of this fire line which is what 40 pound breaking strain. Yeah, but what you see is that it, to put 40 pounds on a rod it's really hard for a person you know so yeah, you can break the line like this and that's what happens like if you have a large fish and you can't slow him down or you just actually bring the fish you don't want to like don't want to lose all your line you want to lose your line then you come in you put your thumb on there and then you go like that snap so let's see the strain that you put on it 
Oh, give us an idea of what how much bend there is and what the well it's not the bend this side they have to put a lot of a lot of pressure on on this rod and, and if you look at so the what, scale, what do you got there look at the scale see what i got there yeah well that's barely five pounds you see if you do it lower now watch watch if i get the rod lower yeah now watch how much pressure i can put when yeah. I get lower in the rod sure is sure you're up at 10 you or see? nearly 10 pound so that's what happens when you high stick it you don't put too yeah. much pressure on, on on the fish yes and if you keep it low this is where you could put the maximum force on the fish yes and this never even i've never even get close to 40. <laughs> yeah yeah 40 or even 30. yeah so you're turning the fish around at turning 10 at around. less than 10 pound and you're not you're not you're not uh trying to lift the whole thing except if you're one of those grouper fishermen that you're trying to pull it out of a wreck okay, nice and slow break it another way you can use your drag you see this thumb yeah this thumb i yeah. can actually adjust the drag yeah. and you can actually put a little pressure on it and yeah. then if the fish goes you know you can sure. actually use your control thumb the winch nice and slow 15 16 about 18 pound so we've halved the strength of the monofilament with uh, with the knot. Uh, let's see, it was the wire that the got wire, it. Yeah, I think it was that the wire wasn't twisted right. But, interesting uh, that it's the wires that are breaking. Well, yeah. They're not breaking, they're just, are they breaking or they're pulling out? Or well, they're just pulling off, maybe it was just Oh, not maybe tied. pulling out? Yeah, yeah, I don't think they were just, uh, I don't think it was mm -hmm. twisted right. Mm -hmm. Well everyone, that is all the time we have for today. Uh, we've only just scratched the surface of all the projects that Jerry brought to Lucky Fish. So we're going to release a special video on Tuesday covering a whole range of things including how to prepare tasty meals on a small sailboat. We do hope you'll join us for that and make sure you don't miss future episodes of Lucky Fish by subscribing. Your subscription is important to us. And as always, a big thank you from everyone to our patrons who help make these videos possible. See you on Tuesday. Oh, and don't forget, if you have any suggestions about those ethical t-shirts, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks everyone. Bye for now.